Hi there! This video is on why the screen was so dark in the Battle of Winterfell in episode 8.3 of Game of Thrones, The Long Night, that this has been all over the place. Everyone's talking about it. If you don't live in the United States, I was shocked that The Daily Show was mocking this. CNN. Good Morning America was talking about this. They don't even cover the show. Of The screen was so dark, everyone had difficulty seeing it. And as opposed to other times where people made excuses, I think they've had enough that purely talking about the lighting in this video, I'll make other videos about the contents of the episode and the battle and everything, just this is physically difficult to see. It's hard to put a good spin on that. And it was pleasantly surprising to go online and see people upset about it. So I don't need to tell you it's bad. We know it's bad. More important than how is why. What was going on behind the scenes that led to this? The mistakes made, the poor decisions, the technology reasons behind it. So this isn't just yet another rant about it was dark. This is an investigation into what happened. This is an autopsy of it. Because I'm an administrator on the Game of Thrones wiki, so I was researching this. I was writing up our notes section for the article on this episode. And I went so far as to make a subsection in our notes posted there on image darkness, because there was so much to talk about. So this video is based on that, but understand, I wanted to read off the whole thing, but every interview anyone ever made for all of my research on it, but that would make this video an hour long. I don't want to quote them out of context like the interview the cinematographer gave. Please check those out on your own. They're pretty interesting. This is my summation of my write-up for this. So to start with the tech aspects, what is the technology background that led to this? Well, Slate.com had a really great article explaining this thoroughly which I heavily linked for the wiki write-up, so please check that out. I will link it directly below. It explains this pretty thoroughly. And it summarized that there are basically three major points, three major shifts in filming technology which happened in the past 10 years, which are affecting the industry as a whole, but which really this is an egregious example of, they call it the perfect storm of you did everything wrong that could go wrong. The first point is the shift to digital cameras. That happened around 2009. That It was around when they filmed the, uh, the failed unaired pilot for Game of Thrones that the pilot was recorded on film, you know, chemical film. But then the shift to digital cameras happened, so the rest of season one was on digital cameras. And there's a few scenes edited in from the pilot in episode one that we have surviving. When Ned and Robert are in the crypts, that you can tell this is done on chemical film. And the irony is digital cameras are actually better at filming at night in, in dark lighting than film ever was. The issue with that, Slate explained, is it led to a wave of producers trying to show off, oh, look, we're recording a scene in low light with no artificial lighting, which it's gone a little crazy. It's sort of like when CGI was just starting out, like 20 years ago, and everyone went really crazy with being overambitious, doing too many CGI things, which just because you're doing it doesn't mean you're doing it well. But inherently, this isn't a problem. It is a problem when you pair it with point two. The shift to digital HD TVs and LED computer displays. The irony is that while in pretty much every other aspect, these are superior to the older cathode ray TVs, you know, the big box TVs, HD TV displays are not good at displaying low light scenes, dark scenes. That's the one thing they're bad at. And, you know, like in the past few years, if you have one of the really new HDR TVs, they're better at this. I am not a tech person. I am summarizing an article they made, so please forgive me. But just at industry-wide, ironically, there was a push to film more night scenes because they have better recording technology. But their display technology actually got worse. That if you have a cathode ray old TV that still works, this would display reasonably well. 
And this is an industry-wide problem, and there's no easy way to fix it, that how do I change the fact that my laptop can't display low-light scenes very well, and that morons are trying to show off, we can film at night with no lighting, that this is a difficult question. Bigger issue, which seems more addressable, is point three. The third big tech innovation in the past ten years is the massive shift to streaming television services that technically when you're sending a, a streaming signal, well, to keep the bandwidth low, they use file compression, you know, that it compresses, they send the smaller packet to your stuff, and then it decompresses. And it uses lossy compression, if you know what that is, from like JPEG image files, where they display with it smaller. And this usually works. I'm all for the shift to streaming. It's more convenient, and it works for well-lit TV shows, well-lit scenes, but the one thing it affects more than anything that really does not benefit from this are poorly lit night scenes. That officially, that is drastically affected by the compression cycle when you're using streaming services. And now everyone, even compared to five years ago, we're all using Netflix. I watch Game of Thrones on HBO now on my laptop. I think most of you are streaming this, not buying the HBO channel when we're just coming to watch Game of Thrones. So all three of these in combination, that there was this urge to, we're going to film the entire battle at night, that digital TVs can't usually display it that well, and so many of us are streaming it now. So after it aired, the episode cinematographer Fabian Wagner gave an interview about it to Wired.com, in which he was asked, you know, there's all these complaints going around, can you address them, respond to them? And he was pretty flippant about it, that he didn't address anything. He said, ah, oh, well, you guys aren't supposed to be watching it on little iPhones, which, yeah, a lot of people do that, and they really shouldn't, that's common sense. And next thing he said was, oh yeah, and it's filmed like cinema, so it should be viewed in a dark room, that you should know that if you're watching something this dark, you should watch it like a movie like that. And actually a fair point, that yes, you're supposed to watch that in the dark, If you, it's not TV, it's HBO, but on the other hand, you, you seriously think that the thousands of people complaining about this, that it's on TV, the, the Daily Show and Good Morning America are mocking it, you think these thousands of people, none of them thought to turn the light off in the room when it was getting difficult to see. Okay, when I was watching it, on my laptop, on HBO Now, I realized, oh, this is getting difficult to see. I turned my desk lamp off, and I was watching it in the dark, and that helped, but not completely. That People watch TV in the dark all the time. This isn't the first time we've seen night scenes like this, that it was so bad that that couldn't fix it. That wasn't the only issue. You're not the first show that had a night scene. But more importantly, the soundbite of this is the final thing he said was just, and I quote, a lot of the problem is that a lot of people don't know how to tune their TVs properly. That That's what he repeated in that and other things. You know, people just don't know how to turn the brightness up. Of We're not supposed to increase the brightness because that's not what you were artistically presenting to us, one. And more importantly, more importantly, two, Increasing screen brightness in a TV or laptop display, it isn't like magically turning on a lamp in the fictional room you're watching in Winterfell. It's not like turning on a lamp in your room. That you can't undarken something easily because it's recorded information. I'm going to talk about this more in a minute. But when you increase screen brightness like that, it, it screws up the colors. The palette, the contrast gets all screwed up. You guys, how many times have you tried to brighten a screen? Was it really the sharpest quality? If from your own experience, talk about this in the comments, that that messes up so many things with colors. It's not a quick fix solution. And I'm not horrified that he didn't know that. I'm horrified because he assuredly knows that. He does know that. He is a professional cinematographer saying, oh, we'll just increase the screen brightness. He knows that isn't a solution. He was just upset that people were pointing this out. I like that the article in Wired.com also included a couple of responses that they looked up other 
cinematographers, videographers who wanted to comment on it. Uh, this one is from Sophie Barrett, a videographer. She says, There's a fine line between creating atmosphere for your audience, who have waited eight seasons for a battle of light versus dark, the dead versus the living, to leaving them completely in the dark, straining their eyes beyond comprehension. The lack of light sources, or the overcrushed blacks in the in the grading, color grading of the episode, create a confusion of a mix of frustration and intense imagination. The, the color grading is post-production color tweaking. That It wasn't just lack of light sources. They played with the color to make it darker. So, ultimately, though, I kind of sympathize with Wagner. Because step back and realize this is a person shoved in a bad situation by the higher-ups. He has been the cinematographer on this show, uh, with, paired with Sapochnik, the director, who I also really like, for all of their recent big battle scenes, for Hard Home, for Battle of the Bastards. And I hated Battle of the Bastards from a story perspective. From a filming perspective, Sapochnik knew what he was doing, except for the times when Benioff and Weiss would lean over his shoulder and say, and micromanage, and go, no, do it this way. And we know this from interviews. And indeed, the thing that Wagner does actually come out and say is, the showrunners decided that this had to be a dark episode. He's saying, I did what I was told. So no, I don't blame him. I blame, look, I understand you're upset that they threw you under the bus like this, and you're the one that has to answer for it. That This isn't Wagner's fault, that they ordered him to do that. What exactly were they trying to do? Well, in the other interviews leading up to the premiere... What Sapochnik said was that they really were stressing to him this needs to be filmed at night in the dark. It's the long night. And the comparison he tried to go for was Helm's Deep from the Two Towers, Lord of the Rings, in terms of pacing of an episode. And fair enough on him. That's what he was trying to do, even as Benioff and Weiss were meddling with him. But there are already comparison videos about this. That Helm's Deep was fairly well lit with artificial lighting, and the in-universe excuse was, well, there's a moonlit night, or there's a thunderstorm, so that lightning is lighting up the battlefield enough that they can see reasonably well th to show off what was happening, just in terms of lighting, not in terms of action. Another thing is just, as a fan of the books, because there's artwork of this, in uh, different battles from Lord of the Rings, in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, the third movie around Minas Tirith, in the books, it's the, the, the armies of hell have come to the city, and it's at night, and it's lit up by all of their torch fires. And there is artwork of that, the way I mentally pictured it. But in the actual movie, when the army comes, it's mostly during the day or in twilight hours. That you have, and at first I was annoyed, but like in interviews, I saw them saying, Guys, you have to physically see the army. You have to see the size of Sauron's army. We can't have it at night. Night is dark. And there were a few night scenes during the Pelennor field sequence, because it lasts like an hour, briefly, which they used sparingly or would have lit up by fire really well, that it wasn't natural lighting with no artificial sources. So just thinking back to how Lord of the Rings handled this well, and that they kept pushing for this, on top of using that as a template, they filmed this for 11 weeks, across 11 weeks, filming on 55 days. Wait for a minute. 11 weeks times 7 days, that should be 77 days. Why were there only 55 days of filming? They insisted on filming on moonless nights. That they would time their production that way. Benioff and Weiss were so obsessed with, it's the long night, the whole thing's going to be an over an hour long, where it's all at night with no natural lighting, even the fires aren't lighting up that much because it's going to be a snowstorm or we're blowing stuff in, and there's no moonlight. And they truly never stopped to think, then how is any of this going to show up on, on our televisions, on the camera? This was not the cinematographer's fault, this was not an accident. It doesn't look like this because it was an accident. Benioff and Weiss reviewed this. This is what they wanted. They were going, wow, look, it looks like you're really looking at something at night, where you're like in the middle of a forest in a moonless night and you can't see anything. You are making a TV show. It is a visual medium. So why did this happen? It happened intentionally. Because Benioff and Weiss are idiots. 
who have no idea how cinematography or TV production work, and who habitually ignore the direct warnings of their department heads. I, I feel for Wagner and Sapochnik, we've seen this before, that the department heads straining that their superiors, that they micromanage everything, even when they tell them that is physically impossible, or it's just dumb, you can't see that, and they'll find a way. If you followed my channel, I make behind-the-scenes research documentaries from all my wiki research on embarrassing behind-the-scenes failures on the show. You know, we know it's bad. I'm reacting to what did you do that led to this as like an expose. And all of these failures are entirely due to the incompetence, impulsivity, and arrogance of the showrunners. They're frauds. They're not real writers. And congratulations, Star Wars just bought them. Three of my videos are particularly relevant here, so rather than repeat all of them, all the slides, to make this an hour-long video, I'm going to summarize the quick points, and I urge you, go and watch the full versions of these three things I already made. First one is on the Battle of the Bastards. Next one is on lighting in the Sand Snakes Dorn fight in Season 5, which feels relevant to this, this is also a lighting issue. And the third one is on their script writing in general. I made a whole two-hour-long behind-the-scenes documentary video on the production nightmare that went into the Battle of the Bastards in Season 6. It's long, but it has a lot of research in it. And Sapochnik and Wagner also worked on that. I don't blame them. Just these nightmare reports of Benioff and Weiss didn't know what they were doing and kept asking us to do impossible things. And when we said, this is impossible, they ignored us. Uh, for my subscribers, basically... The screen darkness in this episode was Season 8's version of 70 Live Horses. That for Battle of the Bastards, the thing was they kept insisting on we have to have a real cavalry charge with 70 horses, when that's actually a ridiculously high number. And on top of that, in their original script, they had stuff of, like, horses in deep, close quarters melees and playing dead and running into other horses... And Sapochnik had to come back and tell them, horses can't do that, you would maim the ho actor horses. Or, when he later worked around to, okay, we'll have them die in arrow fire and make stage falls, play dead, he then said, but that would take at least six weeks to train all the horses how to make stage falls. I've talked to all sorts of horse experts, this is the bare minimum we need. And they just went to him, oh, you have two weeks, find a way. He's like, this isn't a matter of money or budget. This is an animal. You can't train it in two weeks. Everyone who's in the movie industry has been training horses for decades. This is how long it would take to train the horses to do that. And to build everything we need, they just consistently thought it would take three times less than it would actually take. The battle filming ran over time, and they had to just edit together a new ending from what they had. Please check out the whole thing and... A lot of you have probably seen, it's one of my bigger videos, it's got nearly 200,000 views, so I must be doing something right, that it's at least worth checking out. But um, if you're one of the new people who came in, please really get on that. Um, a lot of, a couple of big Star Wars YouTube channels recently recommended my stuff, because they just stumbled on this in Season 8, were horrified. Of, These are things that Benioff and Weiss have done, like Anomaly Inc. Shout out here, thanks for doing that. That's a good starting point of just the behind-the-scenes nonsense of this isn't subjectively, I don't like this story point, you don't know how cameras work. And you habitually ignore the people who are building everything, and you run overtime. Second video is actually probably the best one to start on if you haven't seen already, purely for the cinematography stuff that... I talk about Dorn in other videos. This one was, a, I made a cinematography series on failures of cinematography in the show. This one was about lighting, that when they had that awful fight scene for the Sand Snakes in season five, well, it was actually decently choreographed. It's the filming was terrible because they insisted on, we have to film in this real medieval Islamic palace, which is a museum now. But it's a museum now. They didn't bother to look up the physical filming limitations that we can't film in the halls. We can't touch anything. We can't knock down a wall if we need to fit a camera in there. It's a museum. You can't do that. So they had to just sneak in cameras where they could. You don't film a fight like that in wide shot. So it looked awful, because it looks like a behind-the-scenes video with no close-ups on anything. That's why it was bad. But on top of that, you know, even the casual viewers picked up on 
Why are they making an infiltration mission in the day? That, well, we couldn't film at night. And just, I accepted that blindly. Oh, well, I guess they can't film at night. Then I looked up, oh, wait a minute. There's this thing called day-for-night filming in cinematography that this isn't a new issue. How to make daylight scenes look like nighttime has been an issue in camera work for a hundred years. It comes down to the technical issue of the nature of light, that, you know, if, if you've ever done this with your camera, that darkness is the absence of light. And when your camera, like digital camera, is picking up on this, it's light information as pixels being recorded. I talked about this earlier in this video. That's why it's difficult to brighten an image, because there's no, really no such thing as undarkening. That you're not going to add more bit depth, more visual detail to it. You're just increasing the color brightness of what's already there. But you're not going to make out like objects that weren't the light from them of their outline wasn't recorded originally. Check this out on your phone camera right now. That you can darken images reasonably well because you're removing information realistically, but brightening something. So TV and film has never tried to undarken a fight scene. They film most uh, fight scenes during the day and then apply color filters to make it look sort of like night. And while it's not exactly like it, the audience understands, oh, there's a blue light filter on this. It's supposed to be at night. And it works reasonably well. So what horrified me was how little do they know of cinematography that they kept insisting on this. But when you think about it, the cinematographer working on the episode would have known about this. You know, we could just film this in the day and make a light filter. That Benioff and Weiss really wanted to show off that castle. And what are we going to do? See it at night? What we There were other scenes of it in the day. That's why they did that. Of The visual look of having this bright, shiny castle was more important to them than this should be taking place at night. And what we have now is sort of the inverse of that, of they wanted to show off that this was this huge battle at night, and it didn't occur to them that, you know, we can't see it. The last point, and probably the most important, is a video I made going over these script reports we only got a few weeks ago. We don't have access to their scripts. The Vanity Fair actually went to the WGA archives and looked at them, and they're full of these paragraph-long descriptions of characters' mental states even their internal mental monologues. Stuff that could never come up on camera, and it's beyond just informing the actors. It's It looks like book prose. Because these are failed book authors who are moonlighting as script doctors. And, I mean, things that you could never convey this information, like, it's why the original unaired pilot failed. That Among other things, if you saw them talking about this on Jimmy Kimmel the other day, the big complaint was, the dialogue is got such little information in it, people couldn't pick up that Cersei was Jamie's sister. When you actually read the script, it says that repeatedly in the scene description parts. And they're so blind to what the audience is experiencing, that lack of empathy, if I can't put myself in place of the audience, that they truly think, well, I read it in the script, therefore it must be obvious. When, you know, people were directly complaining about this, of, you know, like, information is sloppy, and this has come up multiple times over the entire run of the show, where they'll just have a character staring, and they say, well, in the script, it, there's subtext of explaining what they're thinking, and this came to a point where basic plot mechanics were unclear. Now, so the point of my other video was... They're so bad at this, they can't comprehend that they're not conveying conveying this verbal information, the verbal information in that, okay, the part, the only part the audience can see are the dialogue parts that are spoken aloud, not the scene description. This is related to that. In this case, instead of verbal information, it's visual information that you wanted a scene realistically filmed at night, in the middle of a moonless night, it, when it's so dark we can't see anything. Well, how will the audience see what's going on? They look like blurs on the screen, just like with the Cersei thing with the pilot. They're going, well, I know what's happening because it's in the scene descriptions in the script I'm, I'm holding. And like when the, the cast goes, oh, the table read was so great, because you're reading a script spelling out what the army movements are and what each character is doing. 
but when what the audience is experiencing is a blur just this blur on screen and they just do not have the self-awareness to realize wait a minute the audience can't see what's in the script so please check out these other videos i talk more a lot about just this is just another example another link in the chain of these men do not know how tv works and the cinematographer must have been warning them just like 70 live horses this isn't how screen lighting works the scene is unwatchable it's unwatchably dark and laughably predictably it blew up in their faces it's all over the news now of this is unwatchable because you wanted it to be so dark we can't see it and then got surprised when people couldn't tell what's going on.